I'm here with uh, Ray Schwab in the village of Lombard, Illinois. We're talking about an ultra-thin white topping project they're doing in an industrial park. Can you explain a little bit about how this is going to work? Okay, uh, we're on uh, DuPage Avenue here in the uh, northern part of Lombard. It's our industrial park. Uh, right now, uh, as you can go look down the street there, you can see the contractor working, uh, doing driveways and curb. And as a preparatory item for our concrete, ultra-thin concrete overlay, we are doing the curb and, side, and uh, driveways. What we need to do is elevate the curb by four inches so we can achieve uh, four inches of ultra-thin white topping. And the reason we have to do that is the current section of asphalt pavement would not be sufficient for us to get our 10 to 15 years of pavement life that we're looking to extend out here in the North Industrial Park until the village can uh, really do a uh, full reconstruct out here as well as looking into our uh, ancillary utility items, water, sewer, okay. uh, and the like, and, and moving out pavement. But as you can see, if you look across the street from the face of the curb, that's the elevation uh, of, of four inches, and that's essentially our white topping. We're going to be coming in and milling approximately one half inch of existing asphalt. And this particular street is how, how old? It's approximately uh, 35 to 40 years old. Okay. That's four inches of asphalt. Correct. We're going in, in what we're going to be doing, it's, it's on, depending on what section of pavement you're on, it's a variable section of, of asphalt pavement, anywhere from three to five inches, uh, typically, except for a couple of the newer sections that we have. Okay. So again, we are elevating the curb face by four inches. We're come in here and grind approximately one half inch. That will create a rough surface for the ultra thin concrete uh, layer to bond to. And once we're set, we're ready to go. Now there's uh, also some areas that we do have significant pavement failure sections. We'll be cutting those out and we will be doing full depth concrete replacement on those. So as far as being able to keep going and such, uh, we decided to uh, not do those gaps in uh, asphalt, but to do those in full depth concrete to keep production going. And that is one end that is challenging here with production, simply keeping uh, the businesses open. Many of the uh, businesses do not have uh, two driveways and only have one driveway. Right. So that's another challenge. Okay, great. Okay. So this is... We're on, we're on Ridge Avenue here in Lombard, again, slightly north of North Avenue. Uh, we're standing on a section of pavement which we recently completed. If you zoom down in here, again, this is the four inches. You can see the panel size here uh, that is essentially four by four. And if you look real close, there's a few examples of the fibers that we have in here, illustrated by my finger here. There's a fiber that's coming right off the top here. Yeah. And you can see the various fibers throughout. And again, the uh, has been added. The fibers have been added in a couple of spots. They've been either added right uh, on the uh, on the conveyor system or right in the uh, in the mixer itself. So we've had both. Um, approximately, I believe, five pounds per uh, per cubic yard. And fibrous. Fibers in the concrete obviously add, add sufficient strength to this for the four inches to be able to support the various pavement loads that we have and obviously the traffic yeah. counts that we have. And what are the traffic counts? Oh, off the top of my head, you would have to ask. But uh, It's fairly high. Though. It's fairly high. And we're even, right now, um, we didn't have any recent traffic counts, but we're, we're uh, obviously in a downturn economically. So the traffic counts that we did have are a little bit low. We're assuming probably 80 to 85 percent of, uh, of what we typically would have. This is again on Ridge Avenue. Uh, as you can see, they have two bays. And this business, uh, they're operating essentially six days a week, and they're, I believe, on two shifts. So they're uh, going from early morning to uh, late, late in the uh, afternoon to early evening. Right. What we've done is, is done one half and one half. And uh, what we've done is gap this out and be able to at least keep one dock open with the businesses. And this does vary from business to business within the industrial park. Uh, some unfortunately do not have two docks, only have one, and we've been doing half and half. But we're able to uh, 
and block this off and then we're also using just so the drivers and everybody else knows the steel forms yeah. to uh, make sure the drivers understand that they need to keep off of the, uh, the fresh concrete. Yeah, this does this does add a little bit to the the overall timeline of the project. Correct? Absolutely, absolutely, and that's that's simply the nature of the business, uh, the industrial park, where the businesses need access. Uh, we have to keep everyone going on this. Much similar to problems that you would have with a, a reconstruction with asphalt pavement. You mentioned a few minutes ago. There's no the application. You know, it's not. Um, it, it's no different from any other type of concrete. No, we were typically looking at. Uh, essentially the equivalent of high early concrete. We're having about a three to five day cure uh, depending on kind of what overnight temperatures we're getting. Okay. Being that we're in late October, uh, when we did the earlier uh, placements we were getting solid three day cures when we're having overnight temperatures in the 70s. Uh, right now we're in the 40s, we're, we're more or less closing in on five days. And there's no special equipment to place it, it's placed using traditional. Correct, correct. Um, I think you mentioned, or somebody mentioned that you Actually, a section was uh, placed by hand. Yes, yes, they placed by hand uh, using a screed, and that was simply because the paver could not fit into that uh, section uh, of roadway, so they had to do that by hand. But the section that we're looking at, the roadway is wide enough that both of these sections of pavement were achieved by uh, machine paving. Okay. Great, thanks.